10 Most Scandalous and Shocking Facts About Maxwell Taylor Maxwell Taylor, a celebrated American general and diplomat, was a key figure in military strategy and U.S. foreign policy during pivotal moments of the 20th century. While much of his career was defined by his military achievements, there were numerous controversies and rumors surrounding his personal life and decisions. Here are 10 of the most scandalous and shocking facts about his life. Fact number 1. A Gifted Youth with Personal Struggles Maxwell Davenport Taylor was born on August 26, 1901, in Catesville, Missouri, into a modest family. His brilliance became evident early, he excelled in academics, particularly in mathematics and languages, laying the foundation for his distinguished military career. After attending public schools, Taylor enrolled in the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, graduating fourth in his class in 1922. His military career rapidly advanced, as he was recognized for his intellect, leadership, and adaptability. Taylor began his service in artillery but soon distinguished himself as a strategic military thinker, with key assignments as a military attaché in Latin America and China due to his fluency in Spanish and French. During World War II, he became one of the most decorated American officers. As commander of the 101st Airborne Division, Taylor led paratroopers during the Normandy invasion on D-Day in Operation Market Garden, earning widespread admiration for his courage. For his role in these and other operations, Taylor was awarded some of the highest military honors, including the Distinguished Service Cross, the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star Medal. These awards reflected his extraordinary bravery, leadership, and strategic acumen in combat. In the post-war years, Taylor's career continued to rise. He served as the U.S. Army Chief of Staff from 1955 to 1959, where he played a critical role in modernizing the Army during the Cold War. Later, under President John F. Kennedy, Taylor became Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from 1962 to 1964. Despite these professional achievements, his personal life was more complex. He married Lydia Gardner Happer in 1925, and they had two sons, John Maxwell Taylor and Thomas Happer Taylor. His son Thomas became a military historian, writing books such as A-18, a Yankee officer in the Chinese army. However, the demands of Taylor's career often strained his relationship with his sons, with some biographers suggesting that his focus on duty came at the expense of his family. Despite these challenges, his family remained important, though rumors indicate that his career-first mentality caused some emotional distance. Number 2. The Controversial Fall of Dai Indian Fu Taylor's military career intersected dramatically with key moments in 20th century history, particularly the fall of Dai Bien Phu. In 1954, the French forces were overwhelmed by the Viet Minh at this strategic location in Vietnam. Although Taylor wasn't in direct command, his advice against providing air support to the French has been criticized in hindsight. Taylor, who at the time was the U.S. Army Chief of Staff, underestimated the capabilities of the Viet Minh and their ability to endure a protracted siege. The subsequent French defeat ended their colonial presence in Indochina. Some historians argue that had Taylor pushed harder for air intervention, the outcome could have been different, leaving his role in the affair open to debate. Number 3. The Cold War's Flexible Response Strategy Taylor played a pivotal role in shaping Cold War military strategy, especially during his tenure as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under President John F. Kennedy. He was the architect behind the Flexible Response Strategy, which provided the U.S. with a variety of military responses to Soviet aggression, rather than relying solely on nuclear retaliation. The plan aimed to give the U.S. a more adaptable approach in the face of global threats, but not everyone agreed. Critics, including figures in the Pentagon, argued that this approach risked escalating minor conflicts into larger ones, especially in regions like Southeast Asia. Behind closed doors, Taylor's more aggressive posture led to friction with those who preferred diplomatic solutions to Cold War tensions. Number 4. The Bay of Pigs Fiasco the Bay of Pigs invasion in April 1961, a failed U.S.-backed attempt to overthrow Fidel Castro, is one of the most infamous moments in Cold War history, and Taylor was deeply involved. Although not responsible for the planning, Taylor was tasked with conducting a post-operation review of the debacle. 
His report, presented to President Kennedy, led to public criticism as some believed Taylor downplayed the magnitude of intelligence failures and logistical shortcomings. Privately, it is believed that Taylor's close relationship with Kennedy influenced his handling of the inquiry, and some historians suggest that Taylor avoided assigning full blame to protect the administration. Number 5. A Secret Role in the Overthrow of No Din Diem Maxwell Taylor's involvement in U.S. foreign policy extended into one of the most controversial moments in American-Vietnamese relations, the overthrow of South Vietnamese President No Din Diem in 1963. Officially, Taylor was opposed to the coup, but there are persistent rumors that he was more deeply involved in the lead-up than he admitted. Some allegations suggest that as a key advisor to Kennedy, Taylor was aware of efforts to destabilize Diem's government and may have tacitly supported the removal of a leader who was increasingly seen as a liability in the fight against communism. Number 6. A falling out with Robert McNamara. One of Taylor's most prominent conflicts was with Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, particularly over Vietnam War strategy. Taylor was a staunch advocate for ground troops and believed that military force was the key to victory in Vietnam. McNamara, on the other hand, was more inclined toward air power and statistical methods to measure success. This divergence in strategy led to clashes between the two men. In private, Taylor reportedly referred to McNamara as dangerously detached, and their professional rivalry was well known within the inner circles of Washington. Number 7. Resignation Amid Vietnam Controversies In July 1964, Maxwell Taylor resigned as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a move that shocked both political and military circles. While officially, the resignation was to allow Taylor to transition into his new role as U.S. Ambassador to South Vietnam, there was speculation that Taylor had grown increasingly frustrated with the Johnson administration's handling of the Vietnam War. Some believed his resignation was a subtle protest against what he saw as flawed military policies. However, Taylor, ever the loyal soldier, never publicly criticized the administration. Number 8. Ambassador to Vietnam, a divisive legacy. Taylor's appointment as U.S. Ambassador to South Vietnam in 1964 was a critical period in his career, marking a transition from military leader to diplomat. His tenure, however, was controversial. U.S. involvement in Vietnam escalated under his watch, and his critics argue that Taylor's military background led him to focus too much on military solutions, neglecting the political and social complexities of the conflict. There were whispers within the State Department that Taylor had grown too close to the South Vietnamese military leadership, which skewed his ability to objectively assess the situation. He left his post in 1965, but his time as ambassador remains a divisive chapter in his legacy. Number 9. Speculation over Kennedy's assassination. Although there is no hard evidence to support it, rumors have circulated for years about Maxwell Taylor's potential involvement in, or at least knowledge of, President John F. Kennedy's assassination on November 22, 1963. As one of Kennedy's closest military advisors, Taylor was part of the inner circle that dealt with the administration's most sensitive matters. Conspiracy theories have suggested that Taylor's proximity to power during that era left him open to suspicion, though these theories are generally dismissed as speculation without proof. Number 10. Retirement and the Lingering Shadows of Vietnam even in retirement, Maxwell Taylor could not escape the shadow of his controversial role in the Vietnam War. After his public life ended, Taylor defended his decisions, particularly his support for escalating U.S. involvement in Vietnam. However, many historians and former colleagues remained critical, believing that Taylor's policies contributed to the prolonged and costly conflict that followed. In his final years, Taylor was diagnosed with a myotrophic lateral sclerosis ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. This neurodegenerative condition progressively paralyzed him, but even in his weakened state, Taylor continued to speak about his military legacy. He passed away from ALS on April 19, 1987. While his accomplishments in World War II and Cold War strategy remain noteworthy, the Vietnam War left an indelible stain on his legacy.